Hey, good evening. Welcome to the first Java class. I'm sorry I'm not able to be there tonight. Part of being a parent is having <laughs> dealing with sick kiddos, and part of dealing with sick kiddos is getting sick yourself. Um, just setting up the PowerPoint here. That looks good. Cool. So, at the very least, I am excited to, to introduce Java. Uh, this lecture is titled Java What? So we're going to be introducing Java and mostly drawing connections between Java and JavaScript and TypeScript and the things we've already learned. So we're going to try to connect what we're learning with what we've already learned. So once upon a time, Java was created in 1995 um, at Sun Microsystems, which is now Oracle. Uh, and these images were, I believe, pulled from at or near 1995. Uh, really like the Smithsonian website back then. It really dates it. <laughs> All right. So why was Java created? Well, Java had a vision. Um, back during the time that Java was created, there were a bunch of specialized tools for making specialized things. And the creators of Java, they wanted to write a program one time and to be able to run it ever, anywhere, really. And that has proven to be more or less mostly the case. Um, so today you can run Java uh, applications on, on desktops, and that includes Windows, Mac, uh, and Linux. Uh, you can run Java applications on Android. Um, I don't know about Apple. It, I think it's you technically can do some some magic to make it work, but it's not a good idea. So it, it we'll just say Android, um, and then also it's an interesting application for Java, uh, and that's to be like uh, embedded devices. So different things like medical equipment, industrial components, uh, possibly components in a car. I don't know if that's if that's true or not, but hypothetically, um, there's embedded devices in in vehicles, and so Java has been very successful at since 1995. Um, proven to be to, to work in multiple different contexts. Uh, some of those icons to the right, these are all things created with Java. Um, so if you see a, an app, like a phone app, uh, this is gonna assume that this is the Android version, but uh, Amazon, uh, WhatsApp, Netflix, Instagram, LinkedIn, eBay, uh, Spotify, Uber. Uh, so Java is very much well-established. Um, Really, <laughs> excuse me. There's really no debate there um, that it's it's a well-established language. So let's contrast and compare Java, JavaScript, and TypeScript. So here we have uh, three lines of code. Uh, the first one is in JavaScript, and we're creating an array. Uh, it's a, an array of animals, which includes aardvark, kiwi, and llama. No surprise there. For TypeScript, it looks the same as JavaScript, except that we define the type. So we have the colon, and then we say what type it is. Um, also, not to make this too nuanced, but uh, with JavaScript, we can technically put in numbers and booleans and mix all the different types inside the array. Uh, TypeScript and Java aren't, aren't gonna allow that because we're specifying that this is an array of strings. And so that is all at once. And so for TypeScript, it looks the same, except we're specifying strings. For Java, it actually looks very similar. Uh, instead of, we're kind of moving where we're specifying that it's a string, you can notice that it's an uppercase S, because uh, it's like a string type object, is how it's considered in Java. Defining that it's an array, we have the name of the array, uh, or array list, um, and it says equals, and then we have our, our items, notice the curly brackets. So, very similar. Um, but some different syntax. Right, so TypeScript declares the types of the parameters, function return, and the variables. Similar, similarly, so we have two, two examples here, TypeScript and then Java. Similarly, Java is going to do the same thing. It's just where it um, defines the types is different. And then we have this additional like public slash private thing up here, which we'll learn about. Um, we'll focus on that a bit later. So here we'll notice with TypeScript top example, 
we have the function, we have the, the two parameters, we specify their type, and then we specify what the return statement is gonna be. With Java, we specify what the return statement is going to be right here, what kind of data is this returning, and then we specify the types of um, parameters. So uh, Java has more types than JavaScript does, and so we're gonna use int. Int is uh, int, short for integer and right. So great little comparison example there. So we're entering really a whole new world with Java, and Java has a few different building blocks. So, uh, for example, uh, there is the JDK. You're going to hear about the JDK all the time. You're going to talk about the JDK. JDK contains the tools for compiling Java and running the compiled Java. JDK basically has everything that you really need like all the essential pieces to, to work with Java uh, and there are different versions of the JDKs and so um, right and so the version of the JDK matters additionally we have something called Gradle now fun nerdy fact about Gradle it is uh, a dialect of groovy which is the I love saying that because it almost makes no sense to me but Groovy is is like a it's like a, a language or, or something close to a language, and Gradle was built off of Groovy, and so it's technically a dialect of Groovy. Anyways, uh, so enough of that tangent. So, anyways, Gradle. What is Gradle? Well, if you remember what NPM was for JavaScript, that's very a very close analogy to what Gradle is for Java. So, Gradle is going to manage the dependencies and it's going to automate the build process. Um, so if you think about running like NPM uh, build, you can compile things um, or NPM, whatever script you're, you're running, there's a similar uh, analogy for Gradle. You may hear of Maven. Maven is, um, we can just say it, Maven is an alternative to Gradle. Uh, and so sometimes there's some overlap, but the, the essential piece of information is that Gradle's like NPM and Maven and Gradle are basically the same thing. Uh, IntelliJ, uh, I'm sure you've already spun up IntelliJ. This is a, an IDE made specifically for Java. It's very useful. Uh, we're kind of stepping away from VS Code. You can technically write Java code with VS Code. I, I've done it. Um, it's not as pleasant. Uh, there's certain things you can't do. And so, IntelliJ is the way to go. There's going to be a lot of settings in IntelliJ that you don't need to worry about. And so it's a bit of the complexity that we're just going to intentionally ignore and focus on the, the bits and pieces that we need. Right. Um, yeah. And one difference between IntelliJ and VS Code is uh, IntelliJ is very specific to Java. Um, I would never dream of writing a React application in IntelliJ. Maybe it's possible, but I wouldn't want to do it. Um, right. So what can we do in IntelliJ? Uh, as a developer, we will create and configure new Java projects. That configuration step to be able to just do that with IntelliJ is, is, is very useful. Uh, we'll write and edit code in IntelliJ, kind of obvious. And then we will build slash compile the application and run the application. So I hinted earlier about there's more uh, data types in, or data types in Java than there are in JavaScript. Um, and so let's dive into that a bit. So in JavaScript, we just have number, that's it. But in Java, we have integer, double, float, um, and technically a couple others that are irrelevant, I'll just say, um, especially for this conversation. So you have integer, that is a whole number. Um, so a whole number, like 42 up there. Uh, if it has a decimal place, it's not a whole number. Even if it's 42.0, um, Java's gonna treat that as not being a whole number. Um, 
or not be an, an, an integer. So just 42, no dot anything. It's going to be an, an integer. A double uh, is essentially decimal numbers. So you'll see right here, um, you can add a decimal place, do all kinds of stuff. And then float, it's like a lame version of double. Um, I don't think it's probably fair for me to call it a lame version of double, double, but it's just like double, except that you can only go up to seven digits. And then you need this weird like F character next to it. Um, float is probably useful if, um, in some contexts that I might not be thinking of. And then also if you are really laser focused on managing every last bit of resources for your application, maybe you're running a tiny app for a very tiny medical device or whatever, you might want to be more specific about what data types you're using so that you're not wasting, um, you're not wasting performance. String data types. So this one, we can probably go on a bit of a tangent. I'll try to rein this in. So once again, in JavaScript, we just have strings, but in, um, in, in Java, we have a string, uh, it's like a, a string object, which we'll just consider a string data type. And a string data type contains um, multiple characters in it. Uh, a char, short for character, a character can only be one character. So if we look at the example to the right hand side, we have two strings, with multiple characters in them, and then we have um, these, these chars, and they can be numbers, letters, whatever, but it's still a, a char character, and you can't do more than one. It's gonna complain at you, it's like, hey, I can only be one character. So, generally speaking, I would imagine that as a programmer, you're probably going to rarely use char, and you're probably going to predominantly use string. Oh, another call out. Um, in JavaScript, you can use single quotes, double quotes, doesn't matter. Uh, it does matter when it comes to strings and chars. So a string has double quotes, um, a, a char, a character has a single quote. Briefly, we'll look at some other data types. So there are Booleans in JavaScript, there are objects in JavaScript. Um, so Booleans in, in, in Java behave basically the same way that Booleans in JavaScript do. Uh, there's not a lot of distinction between the two, unless you get really into the nuance. Um, objects, so objects are similar to objects in JavaScript, except that we can't just make an object on the fly typically. Typically it needs to be created with a class. So you'll notice this example object right here, it is created with a class and classes are like blueprints for objects. So Java is it really is just sort of, um, I don't know if it, if it technically is enforcing it, but to a certain degree it's enforcing uh, that we're using classes to generate objects. Arrays, so an array in Java is more restrictive than an array in JavaScript. So for an array here, um, we can have only one data type and it needs to be fixed in length. And so with this, uh, well, we don't have an example of an array here. Um, I suspect that when you are working with Java, you're probably going to be using array lists more than you'll be using arrays. So unlike an array, array lists uh, can have, can technically have multiple data types and they are flexible in length. So here we have an example of an array list which contains uh, dog objects. We declare it and then we can add new dog objects to the array list. Um, how you could have multiple data types is, I don't know if you'd call it a workaround, but, but there's a way to do it. I don't think it's necessary to get in here. Just it's, uh, it's you'd essentially be basically, basically be saying object here and then you could pass in object data types. So like st at the string um, or like, um, yeah. I, I think I'm gonna get, go too much on a tangent here, so I'm gonna rein it back in. Um, so question, uh, I'm not here to ask this to you in person, but this is a valid array. So question, th is this a valid array? 
So we have my array equals aardvark, comma, 27, comma, 5. Is this a valid array in Java? So um, think about the answer in your head. Is this valid? Is this not? Is this valid? Is this not valid? Right, so the answer is this is not a valid Java array because if we remember um, array lists, you can configure them to have multiple types. So a regular array just has one type and this is even missing the bit of code that specifies that it's an array. So um, this is gonna be false. Exercise, so this is gonna be fun. Um, I am going to jump over to the, this stuff. The workbook. So we've got the um, we've got the Java Web Dev Exercises Web Dev Exercises project. If you don't see an option to clone this when you're working through the exercise, that is because the option to clone this happened in um, chapter one. There was an exercise in there which had the links to fork it and do all that fun stuff. Um, so if, if you skipped that for whatever reason, hopefully you didn't, but maybe you did on accident, um, you can go back there and find that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a new, um, a new package, uh, which I like to just think of them as folders, um, but that package is gonna be the, the analogy in, in, in Java. Uh, so we're going to go to project name, right click, add a folder, what are we gonna call this? We're gonna name the package exercises. All right, so I'm inside this file. I'm going to right click on SRC, go to new package. Oops. New package, call it exercises. And now we have a new exercises package slash folder. Um, I'm gonna collapse that. So now we're going to add a new Java class to this package. Um, we're gonna call it anything fancy. That just says new class. Name this what you will name your class. So for example, in the fourth exercise below, I might call it Alice. So I guess we're not adding it just yet. I don't have my IntelliJ wired to get, at least I don't believe so at the moment, um, but that's a good thing to have set up. We're just gonna create a new class and call it Alice. New Java class, Alice. Uh, cancel, I don't wanna do that. Sweet, so now we're ready to, ready to start. Um, we have the Java util scanner that we're gonna add and that has to do with getting user input, which is a fun way to start learning Java. Um, so we're gonna create a new hello world class. New Java class. Hello world. Oops, press the wrong button, whatever. All right, cool. So we have hello world. It, it uh, specifies the package we're in. It set up the basic elements of the class. Um, we're gonna add an import statement. Java util scanner. It's all grayed out. I believe that's because we're not using it yet. Um, and now we're going to declare a variable of type scanner. Um, and that's going to have to happen inside the class because we're not going to write code outside the class. We have our import statements and stuff, but our code is going to happen inside the class. So we have type scanner variable name equals new uh, instance of scanner and then we're passing in system.n, which I'm assuming is like a global thing that we're able to access. All right, add a question to ask the user. So this is a standard, like what we'd see in JavaScript, this would be like a console log. This is not getting any input yet. We're just gonna send them a message. Then we're gonna follow this by 
prompting them for user input and storing that user input inside the name variable. And so from there, we're going to take the user input. Why is this complaining? Unknown class name. Is it just IntelliJ not being friendly? We'll see, we'll, we'll press on. All right, so we are going to run this class and try interacting with it. Um, I hope I find a green arrow. Let's see here. I may not have configured this just right. Let me just temporarily do this. Oh, it's been a minute. Let's see here. So I know one way this will work. I know I tested, oh, I see. Let's see here. What am I missing? Don't need hello. Right click, control click the arrow next to your class. I don't have an arrow next to my class. I'm sure I'm missing something obvious here. Um, as a sanity check, I'm just gonna grab this code right here. Uh, except that I don't want that top piece. And somehow I, oh, I see what I did wrong. I don't have this, um, this bit of code right here that allows me to run it. That's what I was missing. So let me just go back. There we go. So you may, <laughs> you may run into this as well. Um, Run. Hello, what's your name? I say McDev. Hello, and then I gotta fix this. Plus name. Let's run this again. Hello, what's your name? McDev. Hello, McDev. Sweet. Uh, I would like an exclamation mark on that. It's just a bit extra, but it deserves deserves it, in my opinion. If you're just going to say hello, you should be cheerful about it, um, if at all possible. There we go. Nice. All right. So uh, we could press on with the exercise. Um, let me just take a quick scan and see what we have left. Right. Write a program to calculate the area of a rectangle. Print the area to the console. Okay. Um, for sensitive owls. Yeah, these will be fun to do. Um, I'm going to opt not to do them right now, just to press on with the lecture. Uh, let's move forward here. And that would bring us to studio. So, uh, good luck at the studio. Um, once again, I'm sorry I'm not able to be there tonight. Uh, fortunately, you have great TAs. So, uh, good luck, and I will see you. Uh, 